Glória a Deus. I greet everyone in the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite the brethren to stand up in reverence to reading the word of the Lord, which is located in the book of Songs of Solomon. Chapter 7. We're going to read verses 11, 10 and 11. Song, Songs of Solomon. Chapter 7, verses 10 and 11. Amen. Amen. That says the word of the Lord. I belong to my beloved, and he desire is for me. Come, my beloved, let us go to the countryside, let us spend the night in the villages. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, this morning we studied a little bit about the book of Songs of Solomon. And we are going to see how important this book is. It was not possible to say, speak about all this because it was such a rich book, so many riches, wonderful riches, revealed by God to the church. The book of Songs of Solomon was written by Solomon. Solomon was the successor of King David. It was King Solomon. And this book is a book that was considered by the writers as a poetic book. Because here we will see poetry about a marriage between um, relationship with the bride and the groom. And this poetry speaks a lot about the love of each other, the care for one another, how they saw each other, how much they wanted to be with one another. And this poetry speaks about this story of a marriage. But it is interesting that the Lord He has shown to us something more than just that. God has revealed to us that this book is not simply a poetry about a story, but this book is completely prophetic. Because the prophecy contained in this book is related to the marriage of a, between the groom and the bride. The groom, who is Jesus, and the bride, who is the faithful church. And the prophecy of this book, the beauty of this prophecy, is contained in the fact that 1,000 years before Jesus came to the world, Solomon was already being inspired by the Holy Spirit to write this book. A book that speaks about the prophecy of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and also it speaks about the Church. That's why we cannot have this book and miss the, accent, the essence. We cannot at all take away what is the most important which is the prophecy that was registered in this book. The story is beautiful. The poetry is also beautiful. The writing is beautiful. But we need to pay attention to what is prophetic, to the prophecy. But here we will see 
the groom speaking about the love, about the, his beloved, and the bride speaking about her beloved. And here we will see the entire history of the church revealed, everything that speaks about the church, about this great love, the love from the groom towards the church and the, the church, great love of the church towards Jesus. And already on the, the first verses of the first chapter, it already speaks about this, about, speaks about this great love. He will see it speaking about the church, how the church needs to be, how the church needs to stand before the Lord, how the church needs to be before the world, how the church needs to be regarding time, not the time that we count here, but the prophetic time, God's time. David, he, the King David, father of Solomon, he had a, a revelation that he should build a temple. He was not happy with having a palace. He was not happy with having a place for him to live and for his family, his soldiers to be in. But he placed in his heart the objective of building a temple, something that was fixed, so it so was, was sturdy. Because before there was a tabernacle, it was just a movable thing, it was a tent. But there, for 30, 33 years, David, he begins to gather all the, the materials, everything that he was going to need, parts, the wood, the stones, the people was going to be, how, where was going to be the place of adoration, where was going to be the place of this sacrifice. For 33 years, King David, he spent to acquire all the materials for the construction, but he was not the one who built it. The one who built it was King Solomon. And for seven years, it was the period of the construction of the temple, called the Temple of Solomon. My brethren, we are seeing this, something that was prophetic. King David, he represents, in everything that he didn't sin, he represents the person, he illustrates Jesus that for 33 years of his life and his ministry, the Lord Jesus, he fought here on earth in order to show to men everything that was going to be the new kingdom, the new place of adoration to God, what was going to be the, the form of man to communicate with God, because what was the project of God for man? For 33 years, the Lord Jesus, He has shown, He was able to show to us a project, present a project of salvation of men. And in the seven years that now we live, that the church lives, seven speaks about the period speaks of the period of God. King Solomon, he is represented the person of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, that is, throughout this time, the perfect time of God. On God's clock, King Solomon, that is, the person of the Holy Spirit, is now here, working in our hearts, building a work, building a project, causing you and I, we as a church, to have a place for adoration to God. The Lord Jesus, when He departs, He leaves the project already established. 
the church begins. And in the same way that here in the book of Songs of Solomon, what connects the groom to the bride was love. What connects the church to the Lord Jesus? What connects you to Jesus, connects you to salvation Jesus, is the great love of God revealed in the person of the Lord Jesus. The only thing that connects man to God is the love of God that was demonstrated on the cross of Calvary. A price that no one would be able to pay, something that would, no one would be able to do for the love of man. Jesus came to the world and he, he, here he emptied himself for us. And when he departs, he leaves his blood shed on that cross, which is the person, the, the Holy Spirit, because it is the blood that circulates in the body. It's the, body that, it's the blood that gives life to the body. It's the blood that irrigates the, the members of the body. It's the blood that causes men to live. Without blood, there is no life. And the Holy Spirit is represented through the blood of Jesus that causes that every, every one of us to have an opportunity to go to God and to be able to receive forgiveness and be able to be saved in Jesus. The beauty of this book is contained in this way. It's not simply the prophecy that you can choose a verse a text there, or choose a message, no, or something that's similar to this, no. The prophecy of God is complete. It is from Genesis to Revelations. We cannot uh, remove anything out of it. We cannot remove a, a character or a, an experience from anyone here, because the summation of all this is what we need. It is what causes us to want and to always be at the feet of our salvation. And that's the beauty of this book, not only the book of Solomon, but all the books of the Bible, because the, those are books that are inspired by God. They are books that cause us to believe and understand the importance of us to be always in the presence of the Lord. And here the text speaks in this way. I belong to my beloved, and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved, let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. These two verses that we read here speaks exactly about everything that we have already spoken here, about the love between the groom and the bride, the importance that they are together, the care that the groom has for the bride. And he says, I belong to my beloved. He's speaking about the bride. Uh, it is the faithful church, the expression of gratitude. Because the church has the beloved. The church has someone that does everything for the church. The church has someone that died for her, that fought for her, that overcame everything for her. That's what the church says. I belong to my beloved. She's proud of saying this. She has the gratitude to say this. That's what the church, us, have this gratitude of saying, we have a Father. We have a God. We have someone that is ahead of us, fighting our battles in the difficult moments, in the moment of pain, in the moment of anguish, in the moment of tribulation. We have someone that is beside us. We are not alone. And he has affection towards me. In all the verse, it says, and his desire is for me. Everything that he wanted is to love the church. Everything that Jesus wants is to love your life. Everything that Jesus wants tonight is to give to you this certainty, this assurance that he is guaranteed that he is your Savior. That's why Jesus let go of everything. He let go of His glory. He let go of being on the right-hand side of the Father. He became man. He was rejected. 
He was accused, he was judged, he was condemned to death. Even though he had not made any mistake, even though he had not committed any crime at all, but he, for love to us, he accepted everything. And he was able to face our greatest enemy, which is the death. That's why his desire is to be beside us. And now we, in the same way, to demonstrate to him our love, we say, Come, my beloved. Because we see the moment in which our desire, our will, is to say, Come, my beloved. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. This is our, our cry. This is what we desire. This is what we wish. That's what we want. Come, my beloved. Let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the, the villages. My brother, verse 11, here it says, it says everything. It speaks about the fellowship. It speaks of the connection between the groom and the bride. You can you imagine? Let us go to the villages the vineyards. It must be wonderful to be uh, the groom and the bride walking in the vineyards. If you, if you enter into the story, if you enter into the porch, you will understand the revelation. If we accept everything that God has done for us, we will not only see the text as a poetry, but also ever more we understand and accept the prophecy of God. Because that's what we do. Every day we go out to the countryside. Everything, we go out to work, to face the world. We go out to earn our daily bread, but not, never alone. Because we have Jesus beside us. We have our, our Lord that is always beside us. During the day, during our daily struggle to overcome this world, to fulfill the commitments of this life, to be, to be, to overcome any disease, we are never alone. We have a, a beloved that is always with us. And at night, the night will also come. Let's spend the night in the villages. The night speaks of the time time of the day that is most is a moment that we can say the most dangerous time because you don't know what you're going to face during the day you see but during the night the night comes and even the animals they know that and the night is a moment where in which the danger may rise up at any moment we don't see the birds fly we don't see any other animal the night comes the night begins to fall they begin to look for their shelter. And God also has His own time in God's clock. Not in this time that we count here. The night speaks about the moment of the time called soon. Not we in God's clock, if we take away our time, this word night is the key word for this message because the night is the moment in the prophecy of God. It is the exact moment in which we are living. In the history of the Bible, in the history of the Church, in the history of Jesus, in our history, we live a moment of the night, of the darkness, where the sin is every day taking over man's heart, where uncertainty and insecurity, the fear, is every day more and more taking a hold of man's heart. This message was not made to cause any fear to anyone here or any preoccupation, much on the contrary. But it is to bring to us a relief. We live in this time, the time of the night, where the uncertainty is raining upon the world. In every aspect, economically speaking, a virus that was found all, all the other, on the other side of the world is now shaking the economy everywhere. Shaking the economy, can you imagine? 
Whoever has money invest on stock this week, only God. My brethren, we leave this moment, the moment of the night. But those are the moments in which the world are living uncertainty. Those are the moments in which we are pleading, pleading for help. The moment in which the church cries out, Lord, have mercy. Those are moments in the night in which we say, Lord, come to be with us. Let us spend the night in the in the villages. You know what is a village is? The village was a place where the people would take shelter. They would live there. The prophet said, God, you know what, what is a village is? It is what we where we are here. This is a village. Because here we are able to find a shelter. Here we can find a shelter. This is the corral of the Lord. This is the place where the sheep can run, uh, run around. Because the sheep know that this is a safe place. It is in this location where the Holy Spirit manifests. This is the place where the Lord Jesus stands His hand. It is where the Lord Jesus extends His scepter and He decrees our victory. That's why our desire here, like the text says, let us spend the night in the villages because our desire is to run out, run to, towards the arms of our Savior. For those, the times like this, in services like this, in meetings that we have, early dawns, visits, those are locations, moments in which we are renewed in the presence of the Lord. And uh, those are meetings like this in which we, are, we live strengthened and ready to face the trials of this life, face the tribulations, and know of one thing, that we are being preserved, and that our salvation is in Jesus. While the world will go through tribulation, the great tribulation, we are going to be in the arms of our Lord Jesus. The book of Songs of Solomon is extremely rich. That's why we need to pray to the Lord and understand everything that the Lord has for us. The only thing of importance that the Lord has for us, the Lord has for us, if we make a summary of everything that is in the Bible, everything that is the project of salvation of man, what we can understand is the following. There is no better place to be than to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus, the King Jesus. That's what the Lord tonight is inviting you to know the friend Jesus, the one that is going to be during the day protecting your life and the one who is also be at night giving you the assurance that you are not alone. Because the love that He feels for us is the same love that we feel for Him. Salvation that He offers us it's not because we are better. No. If one day you desire to have salvation in Jesus, it's because the Holy Spirit is placing faith in your heart. And we say this to everyone. If today we can declare that we are saved, it's not because we are better than anyone, but because the faith that one day was placed in our hearts is being kept. Is being preserved, is being maintained, not because we are better than anyone, no, but because we want to be in the arms of our Savior. Let's hear a song, and you will at this time pray to the Lord. You'll be at this time seeking the presence of the Lord and experience. Lord, I need to know the salvation of Jesus. I want to live the salvation.
we're, we're crazy because you are the one who found us one day, brought us into your presence, have sustained us every day, Lord, with your powerful hand. We thank you, Lord, for your great love that is unconditional, your presence in our midst, your Holy Spirit walking in the midst of your church. We praise you, Lord, because we have not lacked anything, Lord. Because you have been Lord, our provider, the one Lord, has shown to us how great is your love towards us. This love, Lord, that causes us every day more and more to keep our feet on the rock because you are the one who has shown to us that your love, Jesus, is what is has been enough for us. Your grace is enough for us. Lord, we thank you because you have guided your people towards an eternity and that's a place Lord where your church is going to we thank you for yet another night in your presence Lord for the walking of the Holy Spirit in our midst for everything Lord that you have spoken to your church Lord we thank you Lord we have our love we are thankful to you Lord because you have shown to us Lord how great are your deeds in the midst of your church. Glorified be your name, Lord. In the name of you. My brethren, the, uh, the Lord gave a spiritual gift to the service, and one of those gifts, the Lord speaks regarding a man. He has great desire to accept Jesus as the Savior of his life. He, for many times, he has already even has already said, I, I'm going to make a definition. That's what I have for myself. That's what I need. But it is interesting that something that prevents him from doing this is an addiction. And he speaks to himself, oh, before I make a definition completely, before I open my heart up, I will first overcome this addiction and then I will go. And this has been happening for a while. Don't do this. Look, the word says that you need to come however you are. The miracle, the one who operates a miracle is Jesus. The one who is going to deliver you is the Lord Jesus. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. When you are touched by the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit delivers you and takes away this desire, it will go away completely. It's never going to come back. But in the meantime, don't waste your time. This desire, this, those thoughts, I'm going to overcome it alone. I'm going to take a, a little time. I'm going to try. Don't do this. Come. And you will see how the love of God will transform your life. Amen. Lord also speaks about another man that has been a target of an evangelization from a few people. He's always receiving an invitation to come to the church, to also be at God's feet. But he, in his own thinking, human logic, he thinks, I'm an honest man. I have a good character. I don't wish any ill to anyone. So I don't need that. I don't need any of it. I feel like I'm a, I'm a good person. But, you know, he's feeling also an emptiness in his heart. More recently, he's feeling that what is going to... You, you know that I'm speaking with you is because you are feeling a great emptiness in your heart. This anguish is because of the lack of Jesus in your life. What is causing this in you is the lack of salvation that Jesus can offer to your life. And tonight, the Lord is extending His hand so that you may accept Jesus as the Savior of your life. You are not accepting here a denomination. You are not making a commitment to an institu evangelical institution. No. None of this. We're not here in any way promoting this institution. We don't need that. In order for you to go to heaven, you don't need to be a member of any church or to carry any label or title. 
The only thing you, you need is to accept Jesus as the Savior of your life. Amen. The direction for you is this. This anguish that you are having is only going to be removed from you in the day you make a definition in your life to Jesus. The Lord is also speaking about a family. That truly, maybe someone that is representing a family, and that person, she thinks that in order to serve God, she doesn't need to do much. She doesn't need to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. She doesn't need to take a stand or to be different. She thinks that just to serve God, she no, just needs to come here, sing a couple of songs, and have a Bible, and have a label, and that's all right. But the description of the faithful church in the book of Solomon explains exactly how the church needs to be. Fair like the moon. There it has all the entire description. And how the church needs to, to behave. We, need to, we can never desire to choose what God has for us. Our stand is to be to allow Jesus to be our pilot. If you do this, if you allow Jesus to take control of your life, the Holy Spirit take govern, governance of your life, then you see how things are going to get better in your life. Amen. Do not cancel the operation of the Holy Spirit in your life. Do not choose. Just open up your heart and allow God to operate because the love of God that you need to know is the love that will, the love that will transform your life. Amen. Let's sing this song. Bring this service to a close.
Santo, Santo é o nome do Senhor. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glória a Deus. Amém. Glória a Deus. 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 Amém. Amém. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Se você quiser aceitar Jesus, você quer aceitar Jesus, você não precisa levantar a sua mão publicamente. Você não precisa levantar a sua mão publicamente. Você não precisa fazer nada disso. Você precisa fazer You just need to do it in your heart, just say to your heart, whatever you are now, I accept Jesus as the only Savior of my life. Do this. Don't let it for, allow it to go for tomorrow. Don't wait in order to uh, overcome your addiction. Open up your heart. Don't let, live for tomorrow the, best, the blessing that you can receive tonight. Let us pray, bring this service to close. Lord God, we want to Praise your name, Lord. We ask that your word may generate life and that your word may generate deliverance tonight. And that your spirit may find a place in the, in the hearts present here and that we may all, Lord, desire to be in your presence. We praise the Lord because we are privileged because we are able to hear your voice and to feel the touch of the Holy Spirit because we, are, we can be called your children, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your love demonstrated on that cross. We praise you because your love one day was able to reach us, took us out of the world, took us out of the addiction, and of the perdition and deliver us from eternal death. That's why tonight, in a single voice, we say to you, Lord, we say that we are thankful to you, Lord. We receive this service in adoration to your name and take us home in peace and that we have a week of victories in your presence. Send your angels, Lord, to go ahead of us, breaking the barriers and the obstacles so that the infirmity may be reproached and that defeat, Lord, may be also reproached and that the anguish, the frustrations, the disappointments may be removed at this instant. And so that the only thing that may reign in our hearts may be the peace that only Jesus can give. It is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God or of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts and the operation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. If anyone desires a prayer, the praise group here, the group of deacons and ushers are here at your disposal. Just raise your hand and we'll go towards you to, be, to pray for you. And we ask that everyone may be praying for this crisis that we are going through with this virus so that the Lord may give a blessing and preserve our lives. And at the same time, let's do everything that we can not to be cautious and prevent any contact with uh, contamination or anything that that is coming up. Even economically speaking, we need, let us be careful so that we know, do not spend money unnecessarily this is a difficult moment, a moment of darkness in which we are living. But the one who hears the voice of the Lord, that hears the direction of the Holy Spirit, never fails, never make a mistake. Amen. And 12, and say the peace of the Lord.